editing all of this is like really obnoxious. Four people watching. Okay, that's good. But I haven't. <laughs> I can't see. Okay, eight people. Okay, we're getting somewhere. But um, hi. I just can't see the chat. You know, the, you know my classic problem, the one I always have. I yeah, I can't see the chat. No, I can't. So let me see. Okay, I can now kind of see the chat. <sighs> Jeez Louise. Okay. I L animations they go. Pascal says Dior Amor. No, we're not doing Dior Amor, Pascal. Kiedora says hi, 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 hi. American Prin Prince. Prince? Hi. Uh Stanley, evening from London. Hi, Stanley. How are you? I've uh, been watching Celebrity Big Brother. Woo. <laughs> Kirsty Alley is in the house in London at the moment. Um, GS says, Ancle Noir, finally. Yes, Brenda says, hey, D, hi, Brenda. Um, are you talking about the beauty community problems? American Pr Prentice, one, asks. About the beauty community problems, Pff, no. <laughs> no, not really. Um, Amido says, hi from San Pedro. Hi, everybody, how's it going? So welcome, uh, I hope you can hear me. And, and everything, these lights are a mess, as you can see, just move them a little bit and everything changes. Um, so I hunted down, you know, so this particular, particular, I can't speak anymore. This particular little fella, um, was kind of gone for a long period of time. I, I couldn't um, couldn't find it anywhere, but I did smell it a couple of years ago. This one was launched in 2015, and it immediately reminded me of Sycamore. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to unbox it. I really like the kind of almost 50s looking logo on top. This design is really nice, Cartier font. And um, I have my Sycamore Eau de Toilette 200 ml here for comparison. I have from Kevin, Kevin McCoy, how you doing, sweetie? Kevin sent me a little sample of Ancre Noir, which is basically empty, so we're gonna be using that. There's a, a drop left. And also, I'm gonna show you another thing. A little pouch that I make for my Liz Exclusives when I travel. I kind of have always a bunch of them with me. Uh, I've been, you know, the only, I've been testing out some auto parfums as well. Um, I don't like them, you know. I don't like the Les Exclusives auto parfums except for Gardenia and La Pausa. But I do have a Sycamore for just, I don't know, just in case. Like, I don't even know why because I don't really use it. Where is it now? I see, I can't even find it. Here it is. Sometimes I need it as reference to to spray it on me or somebody else. Um, but I do have the Eau de Parfum of Sycamore as well. So now we have four, four fragrances. They're all vetiver based. They, they all are kind of, well, except for the Cartier um, vetiver blue, Ancre Noir and Sycamore are kind of on that pedestal of the vetivers and they always fight each other. And a lot of people in the fragrance community either love one or the other, but not both, or well, some like both, but you know, there's a lot of debate about which one is better, which one's worse. Um, I don't know which one is better, which one is worse. Each nose is different, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go into that fight, you know, I, I don't, I don't care. You can just pick the one you prefer the most, buy that one and use that one. But this video is not going to be, you know, we're not going to kind of battle out which is the best that ever uh, in this video. I just really want to compare them. I want to understand the nuances, the slight variations in the composition you know i want to understand what sort of story they tell me each one of them in their own different way or which story they kind of don't manage to, to tell me you know uh, stanley asks why are you so stylish really i'm just wearing a normal shirt and a normal t-shirt this is i'm just trying to be really comfortable unless you're not making fun of me right now which is fine too whatever um so let's open it up and
and see how it smells. I got this one at uh, TJ Maxx, by the way, for like $26. That was cheap. They're telling us how to use it. Oh, I see. This is going to be complicated. Okay. Um, I am preparing a thumbnail for later. Oh, actually, the thumbnail is already ready. But oh, hi, Amelia. How are you doing, sweetie? Oh, look, we get a little ring. So the, the box shows us that we got a twist to unlock. Mm -hmm. This is so awful. I hate those. I hate these kind of gimmicky, just like, ugh. okay, so now it's locked. And if you kind of twirl this plasticky, scree screechy, squeaky thing downwards, then the sprayer is unlocked. So, okay. What? Mm. Okay, let's do it here. The sprayer is fairly decent. More. The video is lagging. Yeah, internet isn't the best. <laughs> Stanley's not going to make fun of you. You have such good taste in perfume. Oh, thank you, Stanley. That's sweet of you. So, okay. This bottle sucks. I mean, the bottle itself is kind of okay, but this plexiglass unlock log twist concept girl cartier who did you pay to do this they stole your money um mm -hmm. i like the bottom of the bottle it kind of creates like a, a drop in the water and that expands and in fact if you lift it upwards oh there you see me there but you see that little nipple <laughs> in there Tip of the, and then kind of the water just like spreads out. There you go. Cartier is selling us a nipple in a bottle. Um, so, uh, yeah, Emilio, this is Cartier uh, Vetiver Blue. Or it's actually Eau de Cartier Vetiver Blue. I just unboxed it right now because we're going to compare this one. You know, I smelled it a couple of years back and then I couldn't find it anywhere anymore. And I got it for like 26 bucks, super cheap. And I remembered back then when I sprayed it in the dry down, it really, really kind of reminded me of, of Sycamore. But it's a very, very light fragrance, very bland. Yes, I smell the vetiver. I smell the earthy tone, but I don't smell the dirt. This one is kind of slightly powdery as well. There's a, almost as if there were some kind of irisy tone to it, touch to it. And now let's do my favorite. Um, eau de toilette. Well, one spray is enough. Look at that. <laughs> Just one spray, and we have like like a a whole puddle. This is from one spray, and the Cartier is like oily. You could see when you kind of compare them. This one is kind of oily on the skin. This one is very liquid. So it's a meh. They are different. I don't know why it smelled so much like, like sycamore the first time I smelled it. It's almost minty. There's like something very fresh in there, like camphor uh, or camphora, uh, which um, <laughs> Stanley said, 26 bucks in London. You couldn't get a piece of paper from Cartier at that price. Yeah, but this is TJ Maxx. So, you know, uh, some perfumery was closing down or whatever, and then they got like some leftovers. Uh, by the way, I know we're kind of going into a topic. I mean, this is about perfume and comparisons, but uh, I have, I will make an extra video that only announces in particular this, but I can say it already here. I'm going to start promoting this as well. Um, if you guys wish to, well, join a lecture that I will be giving on um, video and film editing and social media, you can do so uh, mid-November. It will be happening. It will be happening. It will happen. Um, it's a two-day course. 
and uh, it could, yeah, I mean, it could be like a sort of a meet and greet as well, but it's actually really a two two day course in uh, an academy. There's very limited amount of seats available. Um, so I will be, so it's mid November. It will be happening in Berlin, in Germany, and uh, on a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday. So I will be making a, a particular video with all the details just for that. But I'm already starting to kind of, so, you know, save the date in case you're interested in doing something. Like that. So there, I'm going to touch base on a lot of things. And all perfumes will find their way in there as well, obviously. But uh, I will be showing a lot when it comes to from simple things like creating your own YouTube channel, what does it mean? How does monetization work? Uh, all the way to uh, the psychological aspect of video editing, even film editing. How can you become independent? Doing your own shit, basically, but uh, at the same time, you know, being your own boss, but at the same time having an opportunity to also have some sort of financial security by doing also other things at the same time. So it's a very particular um, type of course, actually, that is meant as something that can, for all of you creative people out there, that is meant to free you, to allow you to be even more independent than you already are. Anyway, so I'm super happy about that because a lot of preparation went into that. Uh, it got green lit and it will be happening. All right. So Pedro says, Bizu from Uruguay. Hi, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, Thelma Thrift, I'm leaning towards Hermes these days, but they often lack staying pow uh, power. Hmm. The new version of Terre d'Hermes kind of reminds me of Sycamore and Encrenoir. Okay, well, anyway, let me... Much more kind of menthol, refreshener, refreshener, um, the Cartier is developing. Sycamore the toilet, you could see my review on it, you could see my Inside Sycamore YouTube series that's dedicated to this perfume. I have said so much about it. But let's do Encrenoir that Kevin sent us. Thank you, Kevin, for... The little bit, the little last droplet left. Lalique's Ancre Noir. So let's put it here. Darn, it leaked. Okay. Oh, this one's intense. Um, Ancre Noir. Ancre Noir. Interesting that it's called Ancre Noir because I know it doesn't have the same ingredients as Dior's Eau Noir, but there's a, a slight Noir streak going through both of them. And it does make them, in some facets of the fragrance, similar to one another. And that is the woodsy uh, t touch to Ancre Noir. Sycamore has a woodsy note, but more than a woodsy note, Sycamore goes into the wet roots of the vetiver. Sycamore is more uh, of, of a wet forest kind of landscape where you're kind of just dragging out the roots and they're still like full of that soil and filth and, and dirt and it just smells like earth. It, it's way more intense. Dio de toilette only. While Ancre Noir is a bit more dry, a bit more elevated, less vulgar, if you may. I'm not saying Sycamore is vulgar, but Sycamore is more earthed down, while Ancre Noir is more kind of the top of a tree. Up there, it's more ethereal, and Sycamore is more earth. And Ancre Noir is more kind of going towards the sky. You know, it's a bit more elevated. GS says a lot of people talk about an ink note in Ancre Noir. Um, I'm not so sure if I'm smelling out ink. But uh, I am smelling out something very kind of very strong that cuts through. Um, you know, some fragrances, they vibrate. And Ancre Noir is more kind of, even the bottle, you know, also is kind of very compact, like a square. And it it, it, it kind of, it's like a self-contemplating fragrance. And so it's very locked in its own self. So instead of being this vi vibrating all over the place smell, Ancre Noir is very kind of focused and it kind of cuts right to the, the point where it wants to be. 
And that is similar to ink conceptually, because if you're writing with ink and you know how to, how to really use ink, you know, you have to be very precise and kind of mark your letters or whatever you're doing with it to create the, the picture, the visual, if you're drawing or if you're painting, you can't paint, but if you're drawing, um, well, technically you could also paint with ink, but you know what I mean. Or if you're writing or calligraphy or whatever. Now, Sycamore is more really fuzzy in terms of it, it spreads out more, you know, but <clears throat> in the soil. And Ankur Noir is more up there, while Vetiver Blue is more kind of a teenager version of all of these two. Like uh, Vetiver Blue is. Um, It's 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 kind of the artificial cousin that, despite the fact that the cousin is only twenty years old, the cousin has already got fillers and botox done. It's like a Barbie version of a vetiver, really. Uh, it's fine if you're like really just starting to appreciate and understand vetiver. Uh, then uh, vetiver blue is your thing. Could be your thing because there's like a minty touch to it that makes it very fresh, very camphor-like. Sycamore is much more sophisticated because it's delicate in the eau de toilette form, but it knows where it's going. It just takes its time to get there. So you have to have patience and you have to understand this perfume to really appreciate it. And Ancre Noir is more woodsy up there, um, sophisticated. But the problem I have with Ancre Noir is it really screams of, I'm sophisticated, I'm special, I'm complex maybe even, you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay, we, we get it. Like, you stop showing off. Sycamore doesn't show off. Now let's get, I don't know where, I hear this. Uh, Sycamore Eau de Parfum as the fourth and last vetiver that we will compare. Let's put it here. Ugh, I can't. <laughs> Sycamore Eau de Parfum is just like, um, <laughs> yeah, Emilio says, well, it's called black ink, <laughs> Ancre Noir. Um, and then Gia says, ah, I didn't realize, haha. -ha. Um, Stanley says, after watching your video on Chanel and Teos, I got a taxi straight to my local boutique to purchase a bottle. Well, are you enjoying it, Stanley? I love Anteos. I've been wearing it a lot these days. Um, <laughs> Pedro is doing fine, hiding at work, watching the video. Much love. I love you too, sweetie. Um, you know, guys, I mean, I, I love Chanel, right? But it's, and I've been, but I've been saying this, you know, the Les Exclusives Eau de Parfum range in concentration Eau de Parfum 95% of them are just, I don't like them. I don't like, I cannot like them after I, I have smelled the eau de toilettes that Jacques Polge did. The reformulations that Olivier Polge did are just not delivering. They have, he has modified um, a lot of the basic structure, construction, um, architecture of the fragrance in a way that the buildings, the, the architecture that you see now, you know, visually the image that is built in your mind is not the same building as are the eau de toilettes it just isn't and and i don't want to go into that building i don't like sycamore eau de parfum i really don't i keep trying it i keep testing it it's ju it, it just not there you it's incredible how different i have the eau de toilette here I'm talking sycamore now for whoever's tuning in. And I have Eau de Parfum there. Light years away. The Eau de Parfum has, again, the Eau de Parfum is closer to Ancre Noir than Eau de Toilette is. Because Eau de Parfum is also elevated. It's not really on the soil anymore. It's not on the earth anymore. It's not that wet vetiver root that you're extrapolating, taking out of the, the ground. That's the case with the eau de toilette. The eau de parfum is more 
it's a snobby version of sycamore. It's a sycamore that doesn't want to get dirty. It's a sycamore that stays clean and preppy. It's a sycamore that has its own driver. It's a sycamore that has its own cook and chef in the kitchen. It's a sycamore that really never needs to wash their hands because they always just wear white gloves and they're very aristocratic. I can see some people liking that. I don't. I love the fact that there's this juxtaposition of Chanel being the ultimate in luxury, but I'm creating a dirty, uh, extremely elegant at the same time, but dirty vetiver as a sycamore de toilet. And, and again, I, I know I quote uh, Coco a lot in, when it comes to this particular quote, but I'm going to quote her again and say, you know, she. He says, uh, uh, luxury is not the opposite of poverty. Luxury is the opposite of vulgarity. Now, what does this mean in this case? The eau de toilette is, smells more down-to-earth human. Not poor. It does smell extremely odd. It doesn't have that snob element as the eau de parfum has. The eau de parfum is really like... Okay, rich, and I'm going to show off that I'm rich, and I'm just going to be a spoiled rich brat. That's the type of sycamore that the Eau de Parfum has become. Uh, and also, there's a sweetness in it that the Eau de Toilette does not have. The Eau de Toilette is not sweet at all. The Eau de Toilette is like all over the other side of the range and spectrum. Um, while Ancre Noir has almost like a licorice touch, like a sweet licorice candy touch to it. I mean, licorice is also a root. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever sucked on, uh, an, on an actual licorice root. You, you can purchase them, especially... I, mean, I know in Spain you can get them. Um, I've seen them a lot in Spain, like everywhere. It, you you can you can buy the little roots, the little licorice roots. They're delicious. They're there. There's a certain type of sweetness to them that's just so amazing. Ancre Noir has a pine kind of pine resinousy, waxy mix with vetiver and. A vision of licorice. I don't know if licorice is really in here. Uh, do I, Jacob? Do you like Guerlain Vetiver? Um, I find it a bit basic. Um, but but I do actually. I have a, a sample. I have a luxury sample that was given to me. What does that mean? It's actually a normal two milliliter spray, but it it comes with a shaving rock, one of those like mineral crystals that you, when you're for, for people who still shave with the shaver, not electric. And if you cut yourself, you put the rock to heal. It's weird. It's like a mineral crystal that, that kind of heals any wounds or cuts. So that was, and so I do have the vetiver from Guerlain, but um, it's way more simple than, than all of these. So that's why it's not in this list right now. Um, Stanley says, your metaphors are so elegant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thelma says, hit the thumbs up. I love live streams. Yeah, guys, thumb up the video if you like it. I can't even see how many people are viewing right now because I had to shift everything on my computer. So I don't know. I can just see the chat. <laughs> I have no clue about thumbs or how many viewers. Um, yeah, do I like Tom Ford Grey Vetiver? I'm, I'm not a fan of Tom Ford fragrances in general. So I think they're overpriced and they're not, I don't know. I don't, I don't like them. Um, so I have not, I haven't even tried many of them because I just didn't want to go there. You know, and there's many incredible perfumes out there that I'm still working on testing out and, and experiencing. So I don't need to kind of add that other extra layer to it all. But by the way, thanks, uh, Thelma for mentioning this, uh, thing about uh, loving live streams, because I'm thinking of doing another live stream tomorrow because another thing I hunted down. And this is interesting. So tomorrow I'm going to be unboxing Samsara Guerlain. Also got it like for, well, this one was, well, it's 30 ml though. It's, it's not very big. But since uh, Guerlain changed their packaging and their bottles, unfortunately Guerlain is going into their kind of homogenizing all of their bottles. Most of their releases are going to receive the same shape bottle with the little bees. Slight variation in the color of stickers uh, that they use to label the name of the fragrance. So all of their original bottle shapes are 
out of production and kind of you could find them. this one also TJ Maxx some of us all like 24 bucks so this will be the second Guerlain fragrance that's going to be shown on uh, the uh, Fashion Bunker Super Deco channel and we shall unbox it tomorrow live and smell it so if any one of you has some Sara um, this is the auto toilette version prepared for tomorrow so we could sniff it and smell it together Okay, back to these guys. Let's see how they're developing. I'm smelling Cartier. It's going, it's drifting more and more away from Vetiver and it's going into a, a soft cloud of camphor slash peppermint. It's, it, I, it doesn't smell like peppermint, but it's minty in terms of when you inhale it it you know when you when you when you eat a peppermint candy um it, you feel kind of cooling soothing menthol effect somewhere here that's that's what you feel when you when you smell um vetiver blue it's almost a bit medicinal and i like when perfumes turn slightly medicinal and it's i think also interesting that they called it vetiver blue where's the box that it's so blue and icy you can see even the liquid is bluish so i think there's a reason for that and the reason being that it has that mentholy cooling touch to it interesting and also i think very interesting to use in colder months as i'm i think a lot of people would think to to try using this one in summer months because of its cooling effect but i like cooling tones in winter as well Sometimes I don't like to oppose the seasons. I like to kind of go with them. So, um, you know, like drinking tea in summer, warm tea in summer, I really like that. But then again, in the desert, the Bedouins, they also drink warm tea to cool down. Because truth be told, if it's hot outside um, and you drink hot tea, then internally the body gets the signal that it has to cool itself when hot is being ingested. But if you eat ice cream and really cold stuff what in summer when it's really hot outside, the body keeps going into tilt because the body keeps thinking, oh, oh, it's so cold, I have to heat up. So the body keeps trying to heat up to balance out the cold of the ice cream that you've ingested while it's hot on the outside. So it, it's a mess. You're going to sweat even more, actually, if you eat ice cream. And you're going to sweat less if you drink hot tea. Um, Vedrou says, well, many, many Tom Ford perfumes don't know what longevity is. It's like gone as soon as you put the bottle away again. Hmm. Emilio loves Samsara. Uh, he sees the old bottle on sale everywhere. Yeah. Emilio says, Tom Ford is for rich people who wear his perfumes just because they know you'll know it's Tom Ford. The shade is being dropped. Um, Hedora says, yeah, it is counterproductive. I think you would like Verver Extraordinaire by Frédéric Mal. I have tried it. I have to try it again, though. But Frédéric Mal, again, you know, those prices, <laughs> very expensive. But um, I'm a big fan of tuberose, so Carnal Flower would be the first big 100 ml purchase of Frédéric Mal that I would, uh, that I'm consider doing. Um, huge fan of tuberose. Yeah, huge fan of tuberose. So you can expect that a little, you're a little already, um, how do you call it? Sneak peek to the top favorites for September. It's going to be tuberose based for the most part. And Ancre Noir really has something that reminds me of the first batch of the Privé line from Dior that was launched in the early 2000s. I'm talking about the Eau de Cologne's, not the Eau de Parfums. I'm talking about all of those fragrances that were, uh, well, at least the bottles were, and the packaging was designed with and by Hedy Sliman. All of that has changed now. But the concept of almost kind of a burnt wood inside of an old chateau, 
with resins that still kind of linger on in the air, kind of resinous smell from the burnt wood from centuries ago. That type of concept was already implemented within the first range of the Privé line of Dior. Uh, and that was amazing. It was so amazing and to me so groundbreaking. I've never smelled something like that before back then. Uh, that uh, Au Noir, uh, I hated it in the beginning. Au Noir, I could not understand Au Noir. It took me such a long time to understand it. Now I love it. Now I wish I bought 50 bottles of it, you know, because the Eau de Cologne is discontinued. The Eau de Parfum comes relatively close to the Eau de Cologne, but it's not Eau de Cologne. And also Bois d'Argent, which a lot of people still love today. I still have a couple of drops left from my bottle of the Eau de Cologne of, Bois, of Bois d'Argent. Bois d'Argent um, was much more intense in Eau de Cologne form than it is in the Eau de Parfum form. It was deeper. It was a little bit dirtier. Um, but, but also Bois d'Argent had an element of, of a wood but you can imagine because it's silver woods, it's like it, it's almost like a silver elevated wood, almost from another world. But it has also been burnt, and there's also some sort of resinous, waxy note in there that lingers on in the air afterwards. The Eau de Parfum has lost that. The Eau de Cologne has it very much, and it's a very, very intense element in the fragrance, which combined the initial trio, the first three Privé fragrances launched, which were Au Noir, Bois d'Argent, and uh, Cologne Blanche. Now, Cologne Blanche, um, and none of these really have a vetiver in them, but they, were, they have something similar to Ancre Noir. Hence, that's why I've been blabbering on about these three Dior's. By the way, I tried Joy today. Like, I don't get it. Why, why do they just throw all these bland perfumes out there all the freaking time, you know? I mean, it's like smelling a watered-down version of New Look. Because I have New Look here with me. Um, I can show you a little bit, like, how I store some of the things. Okay, so I have Joy here. Oh, my God, I'm going all over the place. Have it. <laughs> can you smell it? And... It, it's like a watered down version. So this here's a little bit of my um, Dior collection. I keep the samples and the little kind of bottles in in special plastic boxes so they don't get any air. They're like airtight and they also get no dust because white, you know, gets dirty so easily. So anyway, that's a little, you can see a little bit how I store my stuff. Um, Joy has a similar something something with new look. It's just like a cheaper version. Where did it go now? Oh, I lost a little paper. I, I put it down. So, oh, here it is. Yeah, Emilio says it smells a little bit like Alua. Um, it, it has a little bit of the Alua, but it's really, when you first spray it, to me, it's more like the new, it's like a, mass release of the new look, basically. They're not gonna mass release new look because I, they say the ingredients they use in there are better, and so it's gonna stay the Maison Dior fragrance. Pardon me, uh, but um, yeah. So Joy was like, meh. Vetiver Blue is okay, it's inoffensive. It's something you can definitely use in the office, you know, in school even, it's not, it's not going to offend anybody. It's a very unpractical bottle. Um, and not just, be, I mean, because this is 50 milliliter, but it's really, really big and thick glass. I mean, look, this is 200 ml. And you can see that there's like no logic to it really, because 50 ml almost looks like 100 ml. And in terms of how wide they are at the bottom, they use so much more glass for Cartier, so much so that it's actually the same exact size of the bottom of the 200 ml bottle of Chanel. So we're, there's a waste of space here. It's not something, it's not a bottle that they expect you to easily just throw into your bag when you're you know, going to the gym or whatever. Especially because this mechanism of the turning, of this thing turning up and down, you throw it in your bag and you put clothes on top and they're gonna like kind of pressure this and then it's gonna twist open and then it's gonna leak. Really, really not clever 
like the design is really bad um for traveling awful but again quite inoffensive fragrance It's okay. You know what? I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it like really like easy wear. I'm talking like right out of the shower just as, you know, instead of using a lotion, just put that on. And then on top, you could lay layer it with other perfumes later on. Again, throughout the day, I use several perfumes that don't just stick to one. So to me, this would be like a little basic beginning the day. The Eau de Toilette of Sycamore, now, it doesn't have a very powerful longevity. It doesn't, it's not going to last for days, you know, uh, like Eau Dispahan uh, from Dior. On my skin, it lasts at least two days. And on the clothes, you, you can't wash it off, really. But I do have the first release of Eau Dispahan. So people have been saying that it's been a bit watered down. I don't know. I still have the original formulation. Um But Sycamore in Eau de Toilette is very pleasant for whoever comes close to you. It's very, very sensual when, when somebody's allowed to come close to you and kind of really like smell you and be with you. And for that purpose, Sycamore, and, and again, because of that water, rooty, wet vetiver element to it, it makes it very organic and biological. It's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. I mean, I'm devastated that Sycamore... Um, I say it's been discontinued. I know you could still buy it at Chanel, but you can only buy the Eau de Parfum. To me, that's a, that, it's like a flanker of Sycamore. It should be called a different name. And the Eau de Parfum of Sycamore should be called, you know, like, I don't know, <laughs> the bougie version of Sycamore, whatever, just some other name. Like, you know, um, Sycamore rebooted revamped sycamore updated it's, i don't know whatever it's just not sycamore though so i'm holding on to i have stocked up on this one so i do have enough to last me i don't want to say a lifetime but quite a while um so i'm not complaining but yeah Ancre noir Yeah, Emilia's inside Sycamore. Yeah, of course, there's double meaning in the title. I don't choose anything just like without a, a real reason, you know. So check out the Inside Sycamore series. And by the way, if you want to uh, help uh, see the channel grow quicker, uh, you could also support me on Patreon and become a patron. Super Deco Ball spelled together on Patreon. Why am I saying this in this instance? Because over there, Inside Sycamore is going on. So you see some things, episodes, that you don't see on the YouTube channel. Um, I can't say more than that, but Inside Sycamore is ongoing. I can see myself uh, being annoyed by Ancre Noir, um, wearing it on a daily basis. Um, it, it kind of elbows its way through to you. And the more it's on my skin and the less elegant it is, it, um, I'm not liking, we're kind of slowly getting into the dry down. And uh, it doesn't smell sophisticated. You know when, a, when, you, when you smell that a perfume has something cheap in it, uh, Ancre Noir kind of in the dry down is revealing some cheap ingredients in there. That's just my opinion. Anybody out there who's watching now who has Ancre Noir, let me know what your opinions are about its dry down. Uh, okay, there's this. I love your Inside Sycamore series. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, Sycamore Eau de Parfum, it's, it's a joke. It's actually, right now, it's developing in the direction of like a soapy, like a sophisticated soap or something like that. I don't know. my god it has nothing to do like the dry down a lot of people say that in the dry down so a lot of people that have reviewed the eau de parfum i don't know if people when they review something if they try to find positive notes just out of frustration because like they spent a lot of money on something and they want to de definitely find some positive aspect to a product but like i've seen reviews where people say 
Oh, um, Sycamore Eau de, Eau de Parfum opens up different from the Eau de Toilette, then it goes into this aggressive stage, blah, blah, blah. And then as it kind of fades out, it finds it finds its way back to its roots, which is the Eau de Toilette uh, Sycamore. That's not something I smell. To me, the longer it's on my skin and the further away it goes from the Eau de Toilette Sycamore. The Eau de Toilette Sycamore smells more and more natural and vast the longer it stays on my skin. The Eau de Parfum smells more and more artificial the longer it stays on my skin. Chanel will tell you when you go to their boutiques and ask to purchase an Eau de Parfum, Les Exclusives fragrance, they're going to tell you, yeah, you know, we switched to Eau de Parfums and now we're using a higher concentration of essential oils than we did before. Okay, I get it. But that does not mean that the quality is higher. Why am I saying this? Because you could purchase cheaper essential oils or more expensive essential oils. You could use less of a more expensive essential oil for the Eau de Toilette and use more of a cheaper essential oil in the Eau de Parfum concentrations. So, you know, it doesn't really mean anything when somebody tells you, oh, but there's more like concentration of essential oils in the Eau de Parfum. Still, it don't smell as good and as worth it as the concentration or as the ingredients mixed and the way they're blended and used in the Eau de Toilette form. So, in a way, what frustrates me even more is that they did not change the Eau de Toilettes to the Eau de Parfums just to make a perfume better because they thought the perfume would get better that way. No, they did it to earn more money. They upped their prices from like 260 euro to 320 euro a bottle overnight because they swapped the Eau de Toilettes for the Eau de Parfum. So they're like, in my modest opinion, using uh, a lower quality ingredient, but they're demanding more money for it. It's just not cool, you know? Um, ah, hi, Nick. Nick's <laughs> Sycamore, yes. Bikini Burger, I adore Ancre Noir. GS Jacob, do you think Olivier Paul should be kept on at Chanel? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's no, we, you know, with companies like that, that aim towards the heritage, like, okay, if the dad was doing the job, now the son will keep doing the job until the son retires and then the son's son, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can't get rid of him. He's there to stay. You got to make the best out of it. I believe that the way that they're letting him work right now He's going somewhere. He's going nowhere with the exclusives. But he's going somewhere with the lezou. And because, you know, Olivier is all about the, the fruity, the, the citrusy, the mandarin, the orangey notes, uh, and um, those light lemony citrusy notes, which I really couldn't care less for, I like in his way of formulating perfumes using those, those ingredients. And the fact that Chanel kind of realized the price complication at hand, the fact that they made the 125 milliliter bottles of the Lazou quite affordable for Chanel standards, mind you, um, means that they're kind of listening to us. I mean, they're listening to the money. The money ain't really flowing into the Les Exclusives because not many people are purchasing them anymore because the Eau de Parfum concentrations and prices are a joke. But what he is doing for the lezou uh, or the lezou uh, is is a good is a good thing. I think I also quite enjoy his rendition of Coco Mademoiselle Intense, the flanker. I love Ovive, which he kind of I think he co-conceived it with 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 Jacques because Jacques was his father was still working at Chanel when Ovive came out. Misia isn't that bad in the Eau de Toilette form. It's complicated. I use it very rarely because it's a very intense one. That's one of those longevity beasts. They, they're going to lie, you know, it stays on your skin forever. So in Eau de Toilette form. So whoever at Chanel is going to tell you, you know, we've received a lot of complaints that Eau de Toilettes were, had really short longevity. So that's why we're upping it to Eau de Parfums. That's a lie. I have all of the first releases of Eau de Toilette Les Exclusives when they came out around 2007. Uh, with all the new releases. Um, 
And they were way more intense than the eau de toilette versions we got towards the end of the production. You know, they have watered them down throughout the years, which is a classic. It's what they do with, you know, it's what every brand really does. Um, it's a sad thing, but it happens. Um, even this bottle of Sycamore eau de toilette is not as intense as the first Sycamore that I purchased um, around 2008-ish. So, but it, nevertheless, its DNA is there. It's still there and it's really intact and it's still a beautiful fragrance. It just doesn't last as long. Um, but yeah, I would keep Olivier and give him maybe a bit more freedom to really push his agenda and really create the perfumes that he knows how to create well. Does this mean we will be getting classic Chanel DNA? We probably won't. Even though what I have to I have to I have to admit that uh, Les Eaux, uh, Deauville, uh, Biarritz, and Venice, they really smell like Chanel's, not just because of their smell. The smell isn't too Chanel, except for Deauville. Deauville is really Chanel. But it's because so much attention went into creating and designing the bottles and the aesthetic of the bottles and just everything is just so quintessentially Chanel in, in the design and aesthetic that you kind of get hypnotized by it. So you do believe that each one of the three fragrances also smell, in fact, like a Chanel fragrance. They do. Biarritz being the one that doesn't smell at all like a Chanel fragrance, but I love it. I still think it's a wonderful, wonderful perfume. And I am looking forward to the next three releases of the Les Eaux, um perfume. So yeah, I say keep him there for now. Stanley asks, favorite bottle design ever? Well, of course, number five, Chanel number five bottle. Um, and I do prefer its first, first design ever. So here I happen to have a Chanel number 22 perfume. Now, you see this stopper here that they say was kind of designed to resemble Place Vendôme. Uh, you know, the first edition of number five didn't have that. It was just a flat little glass thing. These sides were gone. There were no like little flaps and wings. It was just a flat little, it was so elegant. So the first, first design of the Chanel number five bottle from 1921, that's my favorite. Um, that, 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 that would be my favorite. And uh, do I have it here? No. I love the poison bottle. The Esprit de Parfum, the, the round one, the, the apple looking one with the claw. Um, that actually, for those of you who don't know, the, the poison bottles in the past when, you know, for blind people, they, they would have these like kind of etched or bottles that contained poison would have a protruding bit of glass. So when you touch it, if you're blind and you're feeling it and touching it, you can feel that the bottle has poison in it because it, it had that signature. So it was in pharmacies and stuff like that. So they, that, that's kind of the reason why they created these protruding glass bits on the poison bottle. It's almost like indicating to you that there's something wrong with the liquid inside. Love the design of the deep purple first poison from 1986. Uh, Michael says, are you comparing Ancre Noir with Sycamore? Yes, we have been for the past, like, I don't know how much time we've been spending together. Ancre Noir is here. Sycamore Eau de Toilette is here. Sycamore Eau de Parfum is here. And Vetiver Blue Cartier is here. So we're comparing four of them. Um, Emilia says, a 30 milliliter bottle of perfume with the highest quality ingredients doesn't cost more than six euro. They're brainwashing us. Um, they do cost way less than what we pay for them. That is true. But same applies for clothes. And truth be told, same applies for many foods as well. However, there's one thing I have to add to this, uh, what Emilio said, and he's practically right. But Emilio, when you go to Chanel to, burp, to purchase a perfume, you don't just purchase the liquid. You purchase the bottle, the packaging. Um, you pay for somebody who designed that bottle, who earned also a lot of money to design it. You pay for the fact that they invested tons and tons of money uh, in promoting the fragrance. Uh, you pay for the fact that they have their boutiques in the most expensive parts of the city where um, paying um, the rent for the space is really high. Uh, 
and they keep their spaces really big, you're paying for all of that, you know? So the liquid might cost a six euro, but you got to add all of that other stuff on top of it. Uh, and that adds up to cost a bit more than six euro. Still, for a bottle of, you know, 300, 320 euro for 200 ml eau de parfum, this is an eau de toilette. I keep reminding <laughs> reminding you that this is an eau de toilette here. So let's, let's talk about the toilet prices, 260 euro. Maybe 70, 60, around 60 euro would be kind of the landing cost price of this one, I think. Sally asks, what first got you into perfume? I don't know. I've been into perfume since forever, really, since I can remember, since I was a kid, kind of like really, really tiny, going through Macy's counters, perfume counters, and with like big guys, you know, asking the ladies working there, can I have a sample? And they, they found that so sweet. They would really throw all these samples at me. I just loved them. I love the smell of perfume since forever. They always, since I was a kid, have they have always triggered storylines, memories, and ideas and visions in my mind. Um, and that that's been ongoing since I was a kid. So still today, I... I smell a perfume and I have a whole story unfolding in front of me. Um, and I think partially I'm keeping really close to my childhood that way. I think I'm keeping like a grain, like a grain of, of childhood always with me. There's a kid in me that doesn't, you know, that will never grow up. I'm not saying it's a Peter Pan syndrome. I mean, I'm quite grown up. I take care of myself. You know, I, I work, I earn my own money. That's all. So I am a grown up in, in the fullest terminology of being a grown up. Except I do not wish to forget uh, how amazing and incredible it is to still have that freedom to, to dream up anything and not, not limit yourself, you know, by the fact that you are a grown up, by the fact that you have obligations towards society, by the fact that you have to, you know, have a job, pay taxes, you know, pay the rent and yada, yada. I still have a very... Um, childlike approach uh, of enthusiasm and and wonder and awe to, to towards beautiful things or, or stories that inspire me um, certain type of people and and how they behave you know the, the smallest thing can can really also make me cry I, I just I really am so happy that I managed to preserve um, that naivete also you know that kind of naive touch, that a child might have, and I still have that in me, and I can be cutthroat. I can be totally, totally awake and, and shrewd and, and, and extremely controlling, but at the same time, I can be the opposite of that, um, and that's because I managed to preserve, and I think I managed to preserve some of my childhood um, aspects also thanks to perfumes because with by smelling certain fragrances from my childhood, certain memories are unlocked and triggered and they become so present and they're so in the space, in the moment right now that um, that you really realize, thanks to perfumes, the concept of time that our society inflicts upon us doesn't exist. There is no time as kind of economy wants us to believe there is. Time is, is different. It, it's... Uh, some people would say time doesn't even exist, but if we want to call whatever it is that passes, if you want to call it time, my type of time literally bounces in all directions. It, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go 24 hours a day, 365 or 366 every four years of days a year. Uh, time in, in my soul works in a different way. And perfumes in my life are are kind of the clockwork to time perfumes to me function as the mechanism of a clock a clock being mind you not a clock that you understand being a clock that you would have in your home envision an abstract clock that doesn't have really a body it doesn't have a structure but it rather it lives off of memory and memories are kind of, it's the tact 
that that the time is given. The, the time exists thanks to memory. So perfumes to me are like clockwork. So this maybe helps you understand a little for those of you who have watched my um, review of Thierry Mugler's Aura. Uh, that's maybe kind of a hint, but I don't want to spoil that video for who hasn't seen it. A uh, Knight of the King, to say that the perfume only costs $6 is to misunderstand the capitalist system and the incremental costs of the production process. No, listen, I'm I'm sure Emilio is totally aware of this, but what Emilio is just trying to point out is, if I may, but Emilio can also answer himself, obviously. But I think what he also meant to say is that the difference between what the end consumer pays, the and and what it costs to produce that there's a huge gap in between and it's a big gap but as i said as i explained before um there are more costs than just the liquid that that we purchase you know a lot of money is also invested by these brands and this is why i say certain niche perfumes should not cost as much as they do because certain niche brands just don't invest millions because they don't got the millions to promote these things, to develop the bottles, to produce the bottles, the packaging, you know what I mean? So certain niche products, they can't cost as much as certain luxury products just because the brands are not as famous. Hence the brands uh, do not spend as much money when they are smaller than they would uh, spend if they were really on the level of Hermès or Chanel or Louis Vuitton. Emilio asks, have I tried the Eau de Toilette of Aura? Uh, yes, I have. It's, it's Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is really like... Phew. Sycamore Eau de Toilette is now a cool, cooling earth heaven. Sycamore Eau de Parfum is, is not cool at all. It's more warm. And it's still showing off. It's still with its chauffeur and its own, you know, uh, limousine. It's being driven from A to B. Uh, it, it wears gloves, never gets its hands dirty. While the eau de toilette goes down into the ground and digs with its own bare hands to take out the vetiver roots out of the out of the soil. I love that dirty touch. Uh, it, and I think it's a tobacco that mixes well with the vetiver and the eau de toilette formulation and it doesn't like i do not smell out tobacco at all in the eau de parfum it's like the eau de parfum is just meant to be powdery vetiver while the eau de toilette has no powdery touch in it the eau de toilette is vetiver and tobacco and encre noir is now really like a black woody resinous not resinous but the, the, that wax was burnt with the wood it's like a black wood warm in, in in some way but not really um not my cup of tea if you know what i mean ah, it's so hot in here let's freshen up the makeup shall we i have my little powder you see i start sweating because Air conditioning is off. It's so hot in here. One of the reasons I couldn't also like stream lately is because I'm working like 12 hours a day and I'm super exhausted and it shows. I haven't had enough sleep. And then the heat kills me. I'm a person that needs cold air. Like I need layering. I cannot live in heat. I need cold, cold, cold. <laughs> Come on, powder. Yes. <laughs> Um, Kedora, the thing with perfumes triggering memories happens to me with music as well a lot. When I was much younger, uh, music was quintessential to me. Uh, it was the most fundamental trigger of that kind. But it's less now. I listen to less music now than I did in the past. In the past, I would use music, like I sometimes use perfume today, to create a bubble around me. When I would go out and about in the city, I would put my headphones on and just close myself in my bubble. And, I, and when the music starts, you're in that movie. That music is the soundtrack to your day. And it manipulates you to a degree where you start acting and moving to the beat of the music. 
Uh, and that's something that uh, when you get older, you, I mean, in my case, I just didn't want to do it anymore. I, I didn't want that type of manipulation. I've also, uh, you know, started while film editing um, more and more in my life and working on movies. Um, you realize the power of, of sound in general and that how music can easily, music dominates a movie. So you gotta be very careful when you choose the sound, the soundtrack and the music for a movie because it can make you feel emotions even though the picture doesn't deliver them, the acting doesn't deliver them, the editing isn't as good, you know? So there's a lot of power in, 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 in song um, that uh, it translates into visuals and that's why it can trigger also memory and imagination and thoughts and ideas because music is so powerful. So much so that uh, I'm very, very cautious uh, how I use sound and music in, in my movies. You should never exaggerate with it, you know, but that's something you learn with time. I think when you're very young, um, you're more extreme. When, when you're extremely young, you're, the plus and the minus are like, like it's either there or there. But then with time, you kind of, things blend in more. They're, the extremes round, they, they round up a little bit. And um, I think you, the type of provocation that you felt maybe was also necessary and vital to you. Um, it's just not important anymore because you've, you know, been there, done that, but also you understand it. There is no more mystery there. You understand the mechanism, but this is something each and every one of us has to do in their own due time, uh, in, in their own special way, because we're all so different. And, and some need something I don't need. I might need something you don't need. And of course, soul search, is a search that's never ending. You're gonna do it till the day you're gone from this planet and the process you're going to go through to get as close as possible to that kind of soul search. There's infinite ways of getting there. You know, music is one of them, perfume is one of them, writing and reading is one of them, communicating or lack of communication with people is another one of them. What you eat, how you eat, how you deal with people, how you deal with situations, with objects, there's so much in there, you know? But music is very powerful, not to be underestimated. Have I tried Creed Original Vetiver? I have, I think. God, actually just the other day, I was at the Creed counter and I smelled a lot of them. I can't remember if I smelled... Uh... I smelled a lot of it. I wasn't impressed by anyone, <laughs> I'd say. Uh, Lucia says, uh, hi, Jacob. Super excited to be here with you. Love your reviews. Thank you so much. So yeah, let's see again. How is it, how's this going? Oh, wait, there's nothing. Is there? Yeah. Emilia was right. Cartier is almost evaporated. It's almost not there anymore. But I have to say something that is very positive to me to note about this one, about... Eau de Cartier Vetiver Blue. The minty menthol soothing thing is gone, but there's a hint of kind of like a makeup, makeup y touch, which I love. I love when there's like a little bit of makeup in a perfume. It's like medicinal makeup. Not bad. Way to go, Cartier. No, I really, I'm really enjoying it for, for what it is. And I mean, if you manage to hunt it down, as I said in TJ Maxx for $26. Then I would say buy it. If you're gonna have to spend like $60, $70 for a 50ml bottle, I would not recommend it all. $25, $26, yes, that's a good purchase. Now, eau de toilette, sycamore. It's just so wonderful. It's so complex and complicated. Now it's turning a bit sour on me. And I know sometimes it does because it's really hot in here at the moment. So um, sycamore can go a bit sour. But there's these kind of like the roots and the wet soil underneath is still pulsating and the tobacco is there, you know, and it just it makes it so intriguing. Love it. Anka Noir. Dry woods. Dry resinous woods. 
And the Sycamore Eau de Parfum smells like even more expensive now. It's quite arrogant. I really, I, I don't like, I don't like Sycamore Eau de Parfum. This is the one. I don't know, probably the, the stream isn't, like the internet is not fast enough, so that you probably can't see this very focused, but it does say Sycamore Eau de Parfum. How close can we get before it all becomes really smudgy? Does it even say it on there? Yeah, impossible to see. Anyway. They are very different, all four of them. And I'm going to say four instead of three, because I repeat, Sycomore Eau de Toilette is different from Sycomore Eau de Parfum. All four are very different interpretations of Vetiver. Ancre Noir is almost from another time. Um, it's a dark wood, airy, elevated, almost meditative or meditational kind of type of fragrance. Smoky. No, not smoky. Mm, no, not smoky, but... It's definitely in the woods. Cartier is a naive interpretation of a vetiver. Uh, there's a little bit of sweetness in there, a little bit of makeup touch and hints. It's very, very soft and delicate. If you get it for cheap, I recommend it. And the Sycamore Eau de Parfum is like an expensive soap with some cheap resinous essential oil in there. The most vetiver I smell after all this time has passed, and the, the purest form of vetiver I smell is in here. Sycamore Eau de Toilette. This one beats the Ancre Noir. Just because the way the vetiver is interpreted, interpreted, the way it's interpreted, um, by Jacques Polge, it's just in its purest form, as pure as it gets. All of the other vetivers are mixed with other things. There's interpretations there. There's like other storylines happening around the vetiver. And in Sycamore de Toilette, it's, it's all about the vetiver. The vetiver does not allow any other story to happen around it. It's the vetiver that's telling the story. That's exactly what it is. So there you go. At the end, we had to compare them. And to me, the winner in terms of vet vetiverism <laughs> is uh, Sycamore on the toilet. Second place. Goes to Sycamore Eau de Parfum. Third place to the Cartier. And fourth to Ancre Noir. Now, I'm just classifying them in terms of vetiver not in terms of which perfume is better or not. It, it's just the vetiver kind of comes the least out to me in the dry down in Ancre Noir because it, there's other woods in there. Not really, it's not that wet vetiver that, that kind of I'm used to smelling when I smell a vetiver. Um, Amiga says, that's the weirdest thing about Katia perfumes. They smell so strong, and all of a sudden, they're gone. A lot of them are, yeah. Um, oh, Kedora says, they have uh, in Douglas perfumeries everywhere in Europe, the Katia Vetiva. Uh, GS, any thoughts on Blue Parfum? I won't blame you if not. I actually, in my Chanel boutique, they were so sweet, they gave me the little miniature bottles um i don't like blue i just don't like chanel's blue um the pure perfume is a little bit more deep than the eau de toilette and the eau de parfum but it's still not for me oh so i can snatch it when i'm well i mean i already have it why should i snatch 
<laughs> I have that in the Cartier. Colin Jinx, literally just got back from Chanel, purchased Les Eaux, Deauville. You assisted greatly. Oh, thank you. Though it really is my personal favorite as well. Lovely content as always. Cheers. Thank you so much, Colin, and congratulations on your Deauville purchase. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's a really good perfume. And the more I use it, and the less it does remind me of uh, Cristal. Sorry, fingerprints everywhere. But there's hints of it anyway. And why am I saying this? The more I use it, the less it reminds me of Because in the, in the first impressions, it gave me a lot of Cristal vibes. But the more I use it, and the more facets of the character of the fragrance I discover, and the more facets and nuances that I discover, and of course, the more character the perfume gets in my eyes or in my nose. It wins more and more its own ground, its own territory. And the more territory it gains, and the less it smells like any other fragrance, because the more you dive into a fragrance, and of course, the more you understand it, and, and the more you recognize it for what it is, rather than for what it might remind you of in terms of reminding you of other smells, not situations, stories, or instances. So in that respect, I have to say Deauville has a hell of a lot of character. Of the three Les Eaux released, Deauville has the most, um, for now, because I'm using it also the most. Uh, Venise has, it's a tricky one. I'm loving it more and more, but uh, Deauville has the strongest character. Um, I hope your bottle is not leaking, Colin. Oh, Amelia, is your bottle leaking? Really? I have the issue with the leaking with leakage a little bit with the Venice bottle. Like, so, so um, if I push the sprayer down to the bottom, really to the limit, then it would leak. I've noticed with Venice, something is off there. But if I just slightly spritz it also several times, then it doesn't leak. But Deauville and Biarritz are not leaking at all, no matter how I spray them. Um, I've noticed this quite early on when I started using Venice, and I thought, should I bring it back to the boutique? And I'm like, I don't want to, whatever. You know, It doesn't leak when you lay it upside down or when you lay it flat. It literally, mine at least, Venice only. When I spray it too when I push it too much in, then kind of more liquid comes out of the sprayer and also on the sides. It's a bit messy. But Emilio, yours is leaking when you turn it around? Okay, no, that doesn't happen with mine. But maybe you have the same issue that I'm, that I'm having. So when you, when you push it in too far, uh, some of the liquid is caught inside of the metal, you know, and so when you kind of lay it down, then it, then that re that kind of whatever is rest, the, the residue of the liquid caught in the little metal ring, that maybe leaks out. Or are you saying that it just keeps on leaking if you lay it flat? Uh, do I like uh, the Blue Hour by Guerlain? Mm, I wouldn't purchase it. <laughs> if that if that's an answer, I don't know. Yeah, Emilio. Okay, so you said maybe that's happening. It's leaking from the sprayer. Emilio, so you have the same issue I'm having. It's leaking from the sprayer. Uh, and so it kind of, um, yeah, the bottle is not leaking. Like there's no, the glass is not leaking. It's all about that sprayer and the pressure that's put onto it. And um, that's the issue. Yeah. It's it's the sprayer. I have not tried your voy incident diplomatique. Colin says, I believe they leak as a product of the style of atomizer. They are a bit squishy and unlike any other I have experienced. They are squishy. I know exactly what you mean. Like you can't really, you have the feeling like there's a, Almost like that there's like a pressure inside that doesn't let you really press it down completely. Like it keeps kind of like like um, pushing it up again. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, squishy squishy is kind of the right word to, to describe it. It, it really, um... but again, I repeat, Biarritz and Deauville are not leaking. In my case, only Venice is. 
I wish the spray was bigger and not so misty. Well, I don't know. Like, for example, the this one here, I have it in the other room, but I have the packaging still here. Uh, the Guerlain Chalimar uh, spray. Awful. This is the worst sprayer I have. This thing, you, like, you spray it, it just, like, spits on you like a liter. And then you spray it two times again, nothing comes out. And the third time again, it, like, slaps you, uh, like, unexpectedly. The, the most awful atomizer I have ever used in my life. Um, so I think with uh, Les Eaux, uh perfumes, what is interesting is if you just press a little bit, not really deep in, Emilio, but more often, like tick, 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 you're going to re you're going to get less of a misty amount out of the bottle, and also, um, you know, don't spray it away. Like don't don't you know, don't let it create the mist because the further away you are, the more mist it'll create. So just be very close when you spray it. That also helps to avoid the mistiness. Um, Lucia says Biarritz is my favorite. After your videos on them, I went into the boutique to try them. I went in with the intention of purchasing Deauville, but settled on Biarritz because I love scents with citrus. I think what Lucia, what you really f because all three of them have some citrus in them. I think what you really, really fell in love with, with Biarritz, and this is also the reason I love it so much, it's the Lily of the Valley. It's a very, very good Lily of the Valley. It's the first Lily of the Valley fragrance that doesn't really turn skanky on me. Well, no, not true. That's not true. But it's the first Lily of the Valley that has a, a lighter tone. Like, you totally smell it, but it doesn't... There, It smells good. It smells like good quality Lily of the Valley. And she says, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's the lily of the valley uh, because the citrusy. Because the thing is, um, what really separates Biarritz from the other two is the lily of the valley. That's that's its kind of unique, special ingredient of Biarritz is lily of the valley. Biarritz is definitely the most conventionally masculine, most Cologne-like. Just such a short life. Um, you know, I don't like to gender perfumes. Uh, Biarritz is, it's, it's wonderful. Um, again, the Lily of the Valley in on my skin develops heavenly. It does last really short on the skin, true, but it delivers a freshness that Venice and Deauville don't. And by freshness, I don't mean citrusy freshness. I mean like a breeze of fresh air. Airy, like airy fresh. Citrus doesn't give me airy freshness. Citrus is usually something acidic, a little bit that kind of goes. So if it's fresh, you might be fresh in terms of it absorbs the sweat fresh, kind of like it makes you feel fresh. But Biarritz makes you feel cool, which is a different thing than fresh. Biarritz makes me feel very cool. And the lily of the valley gives me that kind of breath of fresh air. I'm loving it. The body lotions smell uh, last longer than the actual perfumes. Not on me. I have tested them out. Um, also, I I received a um, a message from one of my sales associates at Chanel, and they said uh, a couple of weeks ago already. Uh, even though online they're still not showing them, but they received the actual full size bottles now of the body lotion and shower gels. I haven't purchased them yet because I still have the ones I'm testing. And quite frankly, I don't know if I'm really happy with uh, the body lotion and the shower gels for me personally. The thing about me, I always buy the fragrances. And before I go into the body lotions and shower gels, I go for the soaps. I love the soaps. But Lezu don't they didn't make soaps for the Lezu range. So, you know. Colin has not seen any lotions at the boutique in San Francisco. Emilio says, I like the shower gels because they're uh, weirdly moisturizing. They are. They're, they're good quality lotions, uh, really. Uh, the shower gels um, are oily. They have, uh, yeah, nourishing elements to them for sure. It's a good quality shower gel. Definitely. 
but I love Chanel soaps. I also love Hermes soaps. Um, I'm using the the um, Le Jardin sur le Nil, like the the Nile Garden or whatever soap. It's like a cream. It's literally a cream. It's so creamy and dense. Like you use it. It's not a dry soap like cheap soaps are, you know. This one literally leaves a foil of like creaminess on you when you wash your hands. It's insane. Kiedora, uh, <laughs> weirdly moisturizing. <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to tomorrow, for those of you who are just tuning in now, uh, some sada we're going to unbox I'm gonna leave this one sealed and I'm going to open it tomorrow now I have tested some sada so as I promised you know we are going to get in more into the guerlands as time goes by um, I have tested this one um, and very interesting very interesting it does have it reminds me of something but we're gonna get to that tomorrow so look forward to that tomorrow live stream happening tomorrow then After that, I purchased something else. So two days from now, you can be looking forward to the unboxing of this. The number 19 Eau de Parfum, sealed, brand new. We're going to open this one, and we're going to have a little Chanel number 19 video happening. Um, the Eau de Toilette, the Pure Perfume, the Eau de Parfum. There's going to be comparison of those three. I'm going to be talking with you guys about Chanel number no. 19 and all its facets and goodness, as well as Chanel number no. 19 Poudre. I have a bottle of that one too. I, I bought that bottle. It's a 50 milliliter bottle. I still have like half bottle left. I bought it the day it was released. So it's the first, first, first batch ever made. Uh, when was it? Either 2010 or 2011. I can't remember. But I bought it like the day it was released. So. So tomorrow when I when I actually test, uh, not tomorrow, two days from now, when we do the live stream of Chanel number 19, I will be, I will be having the, the first batch of uh, number 19 Poudre to compare to the others. <laughs> Emilia says, yes, number 19 Eau de Parfum is the best. Yeah, um, yes. So again, this, was, uh, this particular little thing was a duty-free purchase. I got lucky there, so I got 20% off. Vanny, hey, Vanny, how you doing? Hi, Jacob. I see Guerlain, and my heart is smiling. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to unbox and sniff out together samsara. So if you have samsara, prepare for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the samsara day. Colin says, also was disappointed that the boutique in San Francisco never got any cute fabric pouches for the Lezu. This is because the Lezu... And this is so stupid of Chanel, quite frankly, to make their beauty boutiques be special, they only give you the, the, the pouches in the beauty boutiques. They're not going to give them to you in their other boutiques that, that you know, sell the clothes and stuff. Um, it's silly, really. They should just give it to you if you, if you buy the bottle online. Uh, on, on, the online, on the Chanel online boutique or if you buy it in a Chanel clothing boutique that also sells uh, Les Eaux, or if you buy it in the Chanel um, beauty boutiques. It, I mean, they should give you the same treatment, really, because you're paying the same price. So if you're paying the same price, you're also paying for that pouch, really. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm totally with you. I think everybody should have got at least, like, the first release of these fragrances, everybody should have gotten theirs. My hair's a mess. Can I do it on this side? It's growing. I want to grow my hair out, but my, when my hair grows, it's always messy. Anyway, so guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Colin, you're not missing out. They smell musty. They don't smell musty. The pouches don't smell like anything. Unless, I don't know where they kept them, but the ones I got are, are clean. Um, Jim Cat, love your hair. Thank you so much. So guys, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this was my return to YouTube. I've been gone for like two weeks working my bleep off, uh, literally. I'm dying in the summer heat. So hopefully now we're going to get back into a 
more um, standardized routine. Isn't that a wonderful word, routine? Okay. Kiedora says, I literally had to Google what mother washing was, LOL. And no, I'm not a car. Or am I? I don't get it. What, did somebody say mother washing? I don't even know. Colin says, thank you, Diego. Thank you, Colin. Um, Amina says, I stayed for the whole time. Oh, Amina, thank you for, for staying the whole time. Yeah. Tomorrow, we're going to be some Sarah-esque. So I'm thinking, so this is kind of like a shiny red. I'm wearing red today, though. Darn, I should have worn something green today, maybe. But I'm just like feeling more like my lumberjack vibe. And I wore this because of this lumberjack thing, because of the vetiver and the forest. So this is my idea of that. So tomorrow, something glitzy and red, maybe? Or more gold or yellow? I don't know. We'll figure something out. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to unboxing this one and smelling it with you guys. Also, I want to hear your impressions of it for those of you who have tried Samsara. Actually, you have the whole day before we stream to go out and test it. So you could go try it out and you know have impressions here, your first impressions of Samsara as well. This is also an old school fragrance by Guerlain. So there's a lot of history and heritage that goes with it. It's going to be really interesting to kind of dive into Samsara together. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, what time is my stream tomorrow? No clue, as soon as I can. Something like this, like now. More or less 23 hours from now, more or less, you know, because I still have a lot of errands to run tomorrow. And if I can manage to do it like now, I will. But you can follow me on Instagram, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, Twitter, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, Facebook, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together. I will announce it, like, let's say one hour to half an hour prior to beginning the live stream. I will announce it on Instagram. Instagram, at least, like I did today. I said, hey, guys, you know, in short, I'm going to go online and we're going to do a, uh, the video that we did on the vetivers. But uh, so tomorrow I'm going to announce it as well shortly before the stream begins. So we're all kind of prepped. You know what I mean? And you got a whole day to try to figure out how some star smells. So you could, we could do it together, you know, like at the same time, smell it together at the same time. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Never forget to never give up. On love. Don't forget, I'm also on Patreon. If you wish to support me there and see exclusive videos that are only available there, not on YouTube, but there, as well as photos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful evening, Lucia says. Thank you, you too, sweetie. Gia says, ciao for now. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Emilio. See you tomorrow, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> Amina says, get some rest. Thank you so much, guys. Love you all. Take care. Oh, Sarnal Dian says, bye. Bye, guys. Love you.